Hey, what is up guys? It's Harbin Hardware. Now in today's video, we're gonna build the best $1200 gaming PC that you can get in late 2020 and in 2021. Now this PC build comes with this brand new Ryzen 5 5600X processor and Nvidia's Ampere-based RTX 3070 graphics card. Now for $1254 to uh, yeah, be specific, you're getting a powerhouse of a PC and you'll be able to run all games maxed out at 1440p with great frame rate but even 4k gaming with high settings will run very smooth as well and in case you're interested what kind of frame rate you can expect in some of the most popular games you can jump over to the benchmark section and you do find timestamps down below now if you're spending $1200 for a gaming pc expecting frame rates locked at 240 fps in competitive shooters such as csgo and averaging 60 fps at 4k even in the most demanding AAA title such as Red Dead Redemption 2 at ultra settings only makes sense right anyway for this particular build we find a case from Asus this is called Tough GT301 uh, we got a high quality B550 ROG motherboard from Asus we got 16 gigabytes of RAM a 5th gen Ryzen processor and an RTX 3070 graphics card. Now we're gonna go over all these specific parts in today's video, including gaming benchmarks, so that you get a good idea how this PC performs. Well, with that said guys, let's start talking about the parts, but yeah, before we do, I'd appreciate if you guys checked out the channel. Or on this channel, I post PC tech and PC building guides, and I also do monitor reviews, so be sure to drop a comment, let me know what you thought about this video, drop a like if you enjoyed the content, and subscribe to never miss any of the upcoming uh, future PC builds. So for our CPU for today's build, I went with AMD's brand new 5th gen Zen 3 based Ryzen 5 5600X. This blazing fast 6 core and 12 thread CPU is the fastest and best budget processor on the market right now with performance that beats even Intel's best performing and most expensive processors out there. Now taking a look at some gaming benchmarks, we see that the 5600X trade blows with the much more expensive 10 core 10 900k and he even beats intel's latest 10 10 700k in death stranding and in gears 5 the 10 900k actually gets beaten by a few fps believe it or not and even metro exodus the 300 5600x is dominating the field as can be seen Anyway, the Ryzen 5 5600X has a base clock at 3.7 and a 4.6 GHz boost clock. And currently, the X model is the only variant available. However, there's going to be a cheaper non X model that is just around the corner, which I'm obviously going to pick up. So make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my future builds. And the main difference between the X and the non X model is that the X variant has a slightly higher clock speed thanks to a better bin chip from the factory and to save a bit of money here the cooler i picked for today's build is the stock cooler that comes provided with our cpu now while this cooler doesn't offer the best thermals and isn't the most quiet uh, cooler available it is still perfectly good enough for gaming in a case with good airflow Here's what the system sound like running battlefield 5 maxed out with ray tracing set to ultra As for our motherboard for today's build, I chose the Asus ROG Strix B550F and this is a fantastic high quality B550 board that is fully compatible with the brand new 5th gen Ryzen CPUs. This Asus board has all the bells and whistles including addressable our RGB, USB Type-C, dual M.2 slots with heat shields, we got 2.5 GB Ethernet, high quality components in general and a high-end ROG Supreme FX sound chip. 
And in our motherboard, we're going to install these Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB 16GB RAMs. And 16GB, guys, is actually more than enough for PC gaming in 2020 and in 2021. And it was only a year ago the game started to recommend that you had 12GB, so with 16GB, you're gonna sit safe for a long time. Also, the RAMs are picked up for today's build are clocked fairly high, so and so we're going to see a slight bit better performance here too. Uh, versus if you let's say picked up a slower 2666 MHz RAM for example. The Vengeance lineup from Corsair offers top of the line quality and lifetime support. And I've been using Corsair for over 10 years, uh, my PC build so far, without blue screens or other similar problems that often can be linked to faulty RAMs. Now in case some of you guys want to save a few dollars here, you can also pick up the Vengeance LPX. This comes with the same level of quality and performance but without RGB, so this is a little bit cheaper and yeah both kits are linked up down below. Next up we got storage and keep in mind guys this is fully upgradable so you can always pick up another M.2 or let's say another SSD later on if you like. But for today's build I picked up this A400, 480 gig device coming in at just $47. And if you got a bit more to spend here, I recommend the 1TB A2000 NVMe M.2 SSD. And I've been using Kingston for many of my PC builds now and they never fail to disappoint actually. They always seem to hit that price and performance curve with their SSDs, so I'm feeling very confident guys recommending them many on my PC builds, so while the A400 doesn't offer the fastest read and writing speeds versus some of the more expensive SSDs options out there, it is still 10 times faster than a traditional hard drive and the A2000 for example is actually 35% faster and so regardless which out of these two SSDs you end up picking, long lasting loading screens will be much shorter and windows will feel so much more snappy as well. Next up we got our graphics card and for today's build I chose Nvidia's brand new Ampere based RTX 3070 graphics card with 8GB of GDDR6 memory. And this graphics card offers enough power to run the most modern games in 4K resolutions with lots of detail. The RTX 3070 actually performs very similar to Nvidia's last gen flagship card the RTX 2080 Ti so you can imagine that with this powerhouse of a graphics card you will be sitting safe for a very very long time actually and we are gonna look into the gaming performance in just a second. This particular card comes with a nice looking backplate, we got some RGB in the front and we find Asus dual fan slot cooler with excellent cooling and noise levels. Next up, yeah let's talk about the chassis, so for today's build I chose the Asus TUF GT301. This is a mid tower with three 120mm Aura addressable RGB fans. We find a honeycomb design front for maximum airflow plus another 120 rear fan. So effectively we got 4 fans in total here. You also find a tempered glass side panel, plenty of support for both mechanical hard drives and SSDs. We got dual USB 3.2 ports in the front and support for up to a 360mm IO cooler. Now the reason I picked up the TUF GT301 for today's build is because of the quality and price, the Aura RGB, but yeah perhaps even more importantly, it's awesome airflow. And with Asus you can always count on a high quality PC build experience and I gotta be honest you guys, I had such a pleasant experience building in this PC case. Finally, we have the power supply and taking a look at Guru 3D's review of the RTX 3070, we see that a typical 3070 base system consumes around 320 watts of power and that's for the entire system. So picking up a 550 watt power supply is actually more than enough for our PC build today. Amazon actually has two great options here. The spells VGA BR and Corsair CV. Both are priced similar, both have 80 plus bronze efficiency certification, and both are built upon reliable platform. And so it doesn't really matter which one of these two you pick. However, a VGA BR offers 600 watts, while Corsair has 550 watts. And while I like them both, Corsair is a favorite for many reasons. 
Now, I have seen several power supplies failed in many of my PC builds in the past, but once I switched to Corsair, I've since then guys had zero problems with failing power supplies. So picking Corsair for my PC builds is a no brainer and it's actually one of the easiest decisions I make as I'm putting together a PC build these days. So with all the components installed, let's fire up the PC and see how it performs. CSGO is first up and taking a look at what settings I went for we see that I left pretty much everything at low with a few exceptions and this is typically what settings you want to go for if you have a high refresh rate let's say 240 or a 360 hertz monitor. Now jumping into dust 2 on a random deathmatch we were averaging between 400 to about 600 fps in 1080p resolution and this is much thanks to Zen 3's low latency and insane insanely fast single core performance. Battlefield 5 is up next and at 1080p we're averaging 170 FPS and the RTX 3070 is actually about 11% faster than the RTX 2080 Super and 34% faster than the 1080 Ti. Higher resolutions means that we're putting more load on our graphics card but even at 4K the 3070 yeah, it does fantastic as can be seen. Next game is Metro Exodus, starting with 1080p, where I decided to turn off, where I decided to turn off both the Hairworks and Advanced Physics. Now, running the built-in benchmarks results in 120fps for our system, which is a nice boost in frame rate if we compare the numbers to previous generation cards. 4040p also runs great on our system, and even 4K with lots of detail is possible, as can be seen. Moving on to Red Dead Redemption 2, starting with 1080p, again, very demanding title, as can be seen, where the RTX 2060 Super, for example, barely is able to reach a satisfying frame rate. Now, that being said, with an average of 100 FPS, our system does fantastic. Now, 1440p also runs great with almost 80 FPS. However, to reach 60 FPS in 4K, a RTX 3080 with 10 gigs of VRAM is needed. Anyway, if you do drop the settings a bit here, you'll be able to reach 60 FPS at 4K with the 3070 as well, no problem. Gears 5 is another popular title and as we can see the RTX 3070 once again shows that it eats 1080p gaming at max settings for breakfast but even 1440p runs fantastic and yeah 4k runs great on our system as well. Division 2 is next up and even here you should be able to run the game. Division 2 is next up and even here you should be able to run the game regardless of resolution and still reach at least 60 FPS on average with the small tweaks on the graphics settings. All PC components we just looked at can be found down below. I'm starting up a Discord server guys and it would be fantastic if you guys wanted to join. And here you can discuss PC builds and issues and pretty much everything in between. So I'm going to hang out there and answer any questions you guys might have. So you definitely want to join at the Discord server. Link to the Discord can be found down below. Now watch either of these two videos and I will see you guys in the next video.